This is really our last day at Cape Town. We leave tomorrow morning at 7 and what a fabulous day it is. They are auditioning for buskers down here on the dock. Blue sky and the best view ever of Table Mountain. And I wasn't allowed to bring my guitar just as well. And top tip followers, don't go to the busking festival and leave the eggs boiling. It doesn't do the headlining much good. Good morning, 28th of August and we've picked a fairly rubbish day to leave. It's raining, can you believe it? Anyway, we've got everything packed and the route is set. Out of Cape Town and then we just go north. Bit of wiggling to follow the weather. Ironically up towards Luderitz, so uh, if we get tired we might pop in. But otherwise it's a 10 or 11 day trip out to sunny St Helena. So welcome back to the channel. It took a long time to lever us out of Cape Town, but finally we are off. Back on two hulls, heading from Cape Town to St Helena, or maybe Luderitz. 7.15 gate opening and we are heading for the open ocean. Pretty scary after all these months tied up, I can tell you. And time for some last minute whatsapps before we finally lose connection. First proper sale in oh, a long time, other than rig checks and new sale checks. This is us heading out. Luderitz awaits. We're supposed to be making nine knots average to get there before dark in a couple of days. So the pressure is on. Well, this is Stuart taking video under the boat. So, as we leave Cape Town and Table Mountain on the horizon, time to get some grub. Time for some food. So, sandwich and a sandwich dedicated to little Brody. Going to have peanut butter and dedicated also to bypass survivors everywhere a dog butter Bon Mamon the Heston Blumenthal of sandwiches Lunchtime Cheers Cheers It's blowing I know I keep going on about this but I love it 20 to 25 knots it's lunchtime. Cup of tea on the table. Cup of tea in the worktop. And we're doing 10 to 15 knots. And it's a beautiful day. And it's a lovely day. Bring on Ludacris. Luderit. After a calm start, the weather cleared up. We had some fantastic surfing in you know, 15 to 20 knots and all was going quite smoothly. And St Helena, oh look, we're going to be there by Tuesday. We're doing 15 knots and he's up playing himself at the wheel. Happy boy. Quite enjoying a bit of this, which we haven't seen for a long time. But it's blowing 40 knots now, so uh, thinking that conservatism for the night might be appropriate. So we're going to put away, no we're not, we're going to drop to the third reef. When we catch a wave, the boat just takes off. Sounds like an express train rushing underneath the hulls. I could watch this for hours. But on the basis you can't, we'll move swiftly on. At about 20 minutes. Okay. 
you really do wonder about this whole COVID thing. Predict wind, which a lot of people swear by. You can get up to six different grip interpretations. Right now, each of them is saying eight to nine knots. And what have we got? 18 knots. Terrific. So what happens when it says 20 and 30 knots further up the road? Here we go again. Now, we've been out in 40 plus knots before. We have. We've done 20 plus knots before. Of boat speed, yes of we have. boat speed. But what we haven't done is 40 plus knots, boat speed of 20 plus knots in four to five meter seas. And that's been quite exciting, hasn't it, darling? In the pitch black with no moon. It's always in the pitch black though. These things never happen in daylight. Roll on tomorrow. That's all I can say. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Well, we survived last night. Top wind speed of 50 knots. Steady 40, force nine all the way. And surfing like crazy up to our new record of 21.7 knots. Now, one of the reasons someone said not to come to Namibia is because your boat gets covered in sand. That's smog behind us, we thought it was rain, but I think it's actually sand. Because if you look up front, our trampoline has turned orange. And up close on our seagull striker, see the sand gathered there. Oh well, just as well, I spent about five hours power washing the boat before we left. And what it's going to do to our lovely new mainsails. It's always really hard to see how big the waves are. Any suggestions, let me know. just knocked Namibia on head because Namibia is coming to us in the form of the red dust. The red dust is everywhere, all over the trampoline, the decks, and I'm going to have a big red stripe up my brand new sail. The wind turned against us last night and then faded, so we ended up slatting around doing nothing. And if we tacked in the now headwind that we got, we were laying luderitz, so we thought, oh, screw it. We might as well go rather than flop around in no wind. So here we are. How was your night, darling? Much better, thank you. And the fog has cleared to give us our first glimpse of where all the sand came from. And this is us approaching luderitz and the point of the town. Named after Cameron Diaz, great 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 granddad, Bartholomew. So Luderitz is the diamond mining town of Yore. I'll tell you when Yore was once we get in. But still a bit of it goes on. And 
walked through the farm, we have the church. One of the things about Luderitz is it's such a friendly and welcoming place that even if you can't get to Luderitz, it can get to you. I've got that all over our brand new beach. Terrific. And first up, all the check-in procedures. Quiet Luderitz evening. Oh, very pleasant. With the crew of Dream On about to head off on their dream. Having just launched and bought their Leopard 45. Probably see them again in the Caribbean. Foggy night in Luderitz. And the pirate ships are here. So, we got covered in red dust at the end of the storm. And our brand new white mainsail is orange. Because we're rinsing it off with fresh water in a country that gets about an inch of rain a year, so maybe not very environmentally friendly. Rivers of mud. All cleaned up and safely secured to a 100 tonne mooring, thanks Andy, we set off to explore Luderitz and its surrounding area. Luderitz, main railway station from 1912 I think and some of the German architectural style the church the button bends and then your 1960s architecture down to the railway Kreplin house that's where Mr and Mrs Kreplin used to live and there's something up there I gotta go look at so the word in the street in Bavaria in 1910 or 12 was Ooh, there's diamonds in them there hills So the Germans came rushing out here to see what they could get And what they got was train loads of diamonds And they're still digging In the church at the highest point So everyone could look up to it Just so they knew who was boss and this is the Luderitz Lagoon, where every year there is the speed sailing challenge for wind surfers. The old and the new, the wonders of Dulux. This is the original Lesser Hall, the library next door to the Turner Hall, the gymnasium. Woolman's house. Quite a nice sheltered bay in Luderitz, but in the summer it honks through here, 50 to 80 knots, so they say. So you better be on a good mooring. Next morning we headed out into the desert. So this is the village of Colmanskop. It's nine kilometres from the sea, it's on a railway line, and it existed for a total of 50 years from 19, about 1900 to 1950 thereabouts as a diamond mining town. And it was deserted in the 1950s and this is all that's left. Well, we've got sand on our deck and these people had sand pouring in the back windows and coming out the front windows. They're just filling up with sand, returning to the desert. The architect's house. And pretty much everything you see was imported from Germany. Some of these views are quite nice out the window. And you watch the sand going past. You watch the sand go past and oh, look at this. On the railway line. Go down to Luderitz. In its heyday, Coleman's Cop was home to 300 people, 44 children, they had ice making machines, a swimming pool, all the fripperies from life were brought in from Germany and they had a wonderful life. This is the butchers where it's absolutely verboten 
the piddling. And I guess this is where they boiled up their German sausages. Mine's got sand in it. And so you could get a nice lump of ice in your gin and tonic of an evening. This is the ice factory. And I guess this is where you make the ice cubes. And this is the long drops. Only three bogs for the whole population. Yeah. And there you go, Jean, some desert flowers. And the labourers that did all the work, presumably they were down in the shacks somewhere. And this is the grand ballroom come gymnasium. No doubt the social centre of the place back in the day. In the 1930 gathering of the sailing club, perhaps. And so that was Cockman's Cop or Cockman's Clop or something. I have to say, for me, it was a bit like an early 1980s industrial estate in Luton with sand. But some folk like it. If you want to see a better video, have a look at Sailing Florence. They were much more enthused than I can get. Kind of interesting, but there you go. That's me. Round the world sailors, motorcycle adventurers and grandparents await the morning grandchild call. And so that was our trip to and into Luderitz. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up, whatever that does. And we'll see you hopefully in St. Helena. Thanks for watching.